Okay, so let's learn about how do we build a software in traditional world and how do we build a software in incremental world. So what is what is Agile? Agile is nothing but incremental and iterative software development. Right? So we can actually build product in an incremental way and in an iterative way. Right? And how different it is compared to traditional world. Right? In, in a waterfall, how do we build a product and what is the difference between waterfall and, and Agile Scrum? Let's talk a little more specific about Scrum now. Okay? So, in a traditional waterfall world, what we do is we build a product. We build a product for like so six months. We continue building. We build, 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 and at the end, we release one big product. Right? So, we do good amount of requirements gathering, and then we do design. We do a lot of development. We do a lot of testing. Once everything is done for the whole product, only then we release a product. Right? So we don't build, we don't release a product in the middle of it. Right? So because the reason is we collect a lot of the complete product requirements in detail. We do design, high level design, low level design, all that required for the whole product here. And then we do a coding for the complete product. And then we do a testing. Right? That's how waterfall works. Right? So what happens? If the testing is not done, though the whole product is ready, we cannot release a product. Right? The whole coding is done, the design is done, the requirements are understood. You know, we cannot release a product because we don't know the quality of the product. Yeah? So, <clears throat> so here it is either 0 or 100. There is nothing in between. Right? So when do we know that we are going to release or not? Not here. We realize only at the end of the end of six months that hey, we thought we are done well, but there are quite a few defects. There are quite a few issues that we have. Or some features are not even done in half the half code. So now we have to build it. So because some features are not done, what is already built here is still not ready and it cannot go. That's the biggest problem in a, in, in a, in a traditional waterfall. So <clears throat> there, was a, there was a survey done, extensive survey done on the success and failure rates of a traditional and incremental software development. Yeah? They found that only 14% of the products that are built using waterfall actually succeeded. And only 14%. The remaining 85-86% of, 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 the, of, the, of the products that are built were either challenged or failed. Okay? What does fail mean? Fail is very clear, right? We did not release a product or it was scrapped and then we rebuilt it and so on. Those are not failures. What is challenged is either the schedule is not met or the quality is not met or, or something else came up in the middle. There is something that with a lot of difficulty they release, not on this time but maybe after six months for this. Right? A six months project got released after a year. Right? That's, that's, that's a delay that they kind of saw. Or they released a product and they found a lot of customer issues. Right? Post, post release issues, the customer, customer, customer got. Right? So those are the challenges that we had in traditional. Let's kind of step, move forward and see how do we deliver a software incrementally. Right? This, you need to slightly shift your gear and see to understand this concept. We deliver software incrementally by picking one feature for a sprint, like you know, it is a two week sprint we are going to build and in that two weeks we build that, that feature fully, right? This is a potentially shippable component that we build it, potentially shippable feature. What does it mean? For this box, this is, let's assume that each box is a requirement, okay? We pick the first requirement, we completely build it. How do we build it? We do the requirements. Do the design, we do the development, we do test, and at the end of two weeks, we really keep it fully done. And it is potentially shippable quality product. Okay. What is ready? Only this red box is ready. End of first sprint. Now we are done with the first sprint, move to second sprint. <coughs> On top of this red, we build another feature, which is probably blue feature. Yeah. So then again in two weeks, we actually understand the requirements well. We do a design well, we do development well, we do test well, all that required to build a software, to build this software, actually is done and after two more weeks, this feature is also done. So what is ready now, after two sprints, <coughs> one is the red feature and the blue feature, both are ready. So, and this is how incrementally in every sprint, we actually keep adding feature over feature over feature and, and finally that you see that you know, all the features are built and released as a product. So what's the advantage of this? 
Number one, number two. Let's, let's look at let's look at the top two more chart, two more graphs, and, and then we'll come to what is the why we should follow incremental software development using Scrum. You see this? This actually this represents the defect chart. What is open defect? What are the number of open defects that we have? Okay? The current open defects chart. <coughs> so look at this. When it, we assume in a traditional world that you know we spend like a couple of weeks understanding the requirement and we assume that we understood the requirement very well, right? So we freeze the requirements and then we get into the design, right? The design when we do high level design, we do low level design, and then based on the requirements we understood, we actually freeze the design too. And then the bunch of developers. So who does this? This is maybe one person does it, this is maybe one or two architects does it. Then the bunch of developers come in and they do a lot of code. They, they write a lot of code. Okay? And nothing has been tested. Yeah? And then we say that, hey, we have a code freeze. Code is frozen. This is maybe like middle of a project or little beyond the middle of the project. And that is actually where the real testing starts. Right? So the testers come in now and they're going to challenge the product now. They're going to they start filing defects. Right? Let's assume that we have written like, like 100,000 lines of code. And after 100,000 lines of code, the testing starts. You see a defect in every line of code that we have written. Every line of code that is written somewhere here, the design that was designed here, like you know, three months back, you see that that is failing here. Right? So the defect keeps going at one point, and you see that you know when you the, the release date that we committed, we see like 500 defects open. Can you release the product? No. Can you release at least half of the features? Definitely not. The reason is, every feature that is built has one or two critical defects here. And it is not easy to just pull out some code and then release a product. It is even more dangerous to cut some features which is built here and then release a, 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 portion, a, a part, partial product. So this is where we get stuck. Right? Let us look at the incremental way of building a product. How does a defect look? This is a defect mountain. We call it as a defect mountain. Yeah? You build a defect mountain over a period. Yeah. So now let us look at how do we build that in an incremental uh, way and then how does the defect look. Here we create a defect hums. Right? This is called defect hum. You see this black and red line? Yeah. So when we build the first feature, as I said, the first feature is done in one sprint and this each one is a sprint for us. Okay? Take this as a sprint and the feature is understood well, designed well, developed well, tested well, all the defects are found related to this red feature here. So what happens is you found a couple of defects and the developer sitting next to you, next to the, the tester or the, 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 the team which is working together, they find it together, they actually find it and then fix it immediately. And then it comes down to zero. Now they pick the next feature, the blue feature. Okay? They again do the, the understand the requirements, do the design, do the coding, the testing and again in the second sprint, the team actually comes down to zero defect. So they have the hold on the quality of the product. So that when the feature is built, it is fully done well. When this feature is done, it is fully done well. So what's the advantage? Do we need to wait for the whole product to be ready to release? No, not required. You can actually, after a couple of sprints, you can make a cut and say that, hey, we are making a first release of 30% of the features. Yeah, start using it. What are the 30% of the features? They are prioritized to backlog, which comes from product backlog. So the topmost, the critical features, 30% of critical features are built here. Okay? Now the team continues. Couple of more sprints. Another 30 more percentage of the features are done. Make one more release. How beautiful it is compared to this. Here, you don't even know whether you're going to make it or not. It's either 0 or 100. Here, you can actually release, in fact, you can actually release the incremental software product end of every sprint. If you don't want to do that, you can still choose to desire, choose to release when you want to release. You have the flexibility because at any point of time, you have a shippable product which is ready with you. You can just go, you can really respond to the market and you can release a product. Okay. So what are the few, few more are the good part with this? A defect that was injected here in a traditional world is found somewhere here. Yeah? Which is like after four months. Do you have the context of this defect? No, we don't have context. We have forgotten why we wrote this code, why we made this design. Yeah? Where in this world, a defect which was introduced 
and is immediately found the very next day or within a week's time. So the developer or the, design, the, the, the team has a context about this feature, what we heard, why the code was written, and the, the fix is also very high. This leads to a lot of regression data. It's very clear. The product quality is very high because I know what I'm fixing it. Because I wrote that code two days back and I'm just going to fix it. The context is in my mind. Yeah. Human is really, really good at doing one thing at a time. Human is very bad at doing a lot of things and doing big planning and then big execution. Human is really bad at it. Yeah? So, agile software development is all about incremental software development. It's incremental and iterative. You see, this is an iterative. This is an iteration, two weeks iteration. And within that two weeks iteration, we actually incrementally deliver the software. Within two weeks, as well as across the sprints, it is an incremental software development. So with that hope, you understand about the difference between the traditional waterfall way of building a product uh, and, uh, and the good parts of incremental software development. Thank you.